so hello again, Cassandra. First question, um, so I've spent most of my career as a script supervisor. Does anybody know what that means? Continuity, making sure the actors say their lines correctly, making sure the camera angles match, making sure when you get to post-production, you didn't miss an insert, you didn't miss anything. Everything that's going on set that's going on camera is my responsibility. Uh, I get to tell other people that I'm sorry your props are wrong or you brought the wrong jacket, you brought the wrong costume, which has happened numerous times, but I'm like the last line of defense. So when you see something in nitpickers.com, it's like nitpickers.com is pretty much the shame page for script supervisors. <laughs> I've worked with people who have been in the industry for 20 years and have no idea what the script supervisor is doing behind back in Video Village. So yeah, it's everything. You have to understand eyeline. That's my next question. You got, you got here a couple of you are doing videos for your upcoming projects. Do you understand eyeline? No one? All right, so between us, there's a straight line. If the camera's on this side of me and this side of you, it's gonna look like we're looking at each other when we're talking. So it, like the psychological trick of looking at each other because when you're filming, you might have a camera right in front of you and you're not looking at the, the actor that you're acting to. So that trick of where you're looking, so when you edit it together, it psychologically looks like you're looking at each other. Again, the number of people who do not know what this means, and then you get people like both looking off into the distance instead of looking at each other, and you're like, what are they looking at? It's like, there's, there's both looking off to the right side of the screen, there's nothing else on the right side of the screen. This is why back in old films, they had the buffalo shot, which is because they would just set it up. They didn't understand the eye lines and the psychological, so they just shoot a shot of a buffalo. And then they had the cowboys and Indians both running, cut to a shot of a buffalo in between them, so you wouldn't realize they were both running in the same direction. <laughs> um, a little over. I'm used to being behind the scenes and not on camera, so if I'm a bit awkward, I apologize, and I had to make myself notes. Uh, so, Script supervisor and access, you've already got more knowledge than some people who've been in the industry for 10 years. <laughs> um, so I hear a lot of you want to be writers, which is amazing. We need, we always need writers. The biggest thing is it's never going to be consistent. You're, there's going to be so much going on, like anything in the film industry, you're never going to want to dedicate all in on one thing. You're gonna have multiple revenue streams. So if you're doing writing on another project, having a part-time, a boring part-time job is completely fine and it's honestly gonna help you out because write what you know, people wanna see themselves on screen. And if all you know is film and writing and artists, then that's what you're gonna write and your audience is gonna be much smaller because it's not gonna be the plumber who's the plumber's not gonna relate to that writer uh, character. Um, so when it comes to university, I have talked people out of going into creative writing because you're studying the history of creating writing, creative writing. You're learning how to write like people did in the past. You're not exploring what's happening right now. So communications, science, English, anything, history, anything that actually exists in this world, there's so much inspiration out there. You have uh, the Big Bang Theory, where uh, PhDs in science and physics. Uh, Letterkenny, which if you haven't seen Letterkenny, it started as shorts on YouTube, uh, shot in Ontario, uh, shot in Sudbury actually, and uh, it's all about that town. It's actually based in Lindsay, Ontario, but they changed the name to Letterkenny. Um, and the other big one is uh, uh, Live, Laugh, Love. It, she went off and gave up her life and went on an adventure, then wrote a book on it, and then it became a movie. It's all life experience. So where are the stories coming from? We wanna see real things. Um, they say television is furniture, theater is life, and film is art. But art still connects with people. Uh, what am I forgetting? Because I know I'm forgetting something. Yeah. Uh, connecting with your audience, if you are gonna go niche, I worked on a web series called Carmilla, which is lesbian vampires. It was written 25 years before Dracula, and it was a novella and they modernized it, set it in a university for a journalism project, and it became huge in that niche lesbian market. It became almost required reading for some people, but it was campy, it was fun. They got into the mythology and uh, talking to the writers, just like, 
would just throw out like, oh yeah, I know the history here. I know like, oh, this character, you talk about werewolves, but you don't see any. It's like they know the, the background um, and the history and they can get into the lore. So if there's a future season, they do bring that in. It's already established within the world. Uh, Contrary, I worked on a TV uh, movie that was vapors and demon coming back. It was one of those really, really formatted horror films. But I asked the writer, who was also the director, like, well, why does the demon do these things? It's, it's, it's fantasy, nobody, it doesn't matter. And they had no, there was no connection and it felt, the plot felt flat because there's, I don't understand why the demon, but for sci-fi and TV, that's what the audiences want. It's very, very common. Um, there's always Mark and Hallmark. They make about 50 to 100 new Christmas movies every year. So if you like that format, uh, lots of people do. It is huge, especially in the Bible Belt. Um, I spent five years stuck in Christmas purgatory where I was making Christmas movies in the summer because they have to be ready for Christmas and then working in a prop set or a prop house building decorations for Christmas display. So five years, half the year on set Christmas, half the year in the studio Christmas. You, there's too much Christmas in the world, <laughs> but they play them all year round and they'll get repeated play. And every time, if you've written one and you, every time it's aired, you're getting paid. If you, um, if you're into writing and you want to get into series, embrace your fan fiction because it's teaching you working within the plot line of the, the show. It's learning how to keep the characters consistent and maintaining like an original storyline, but also following the, um, the plot uh, of the overall and structure of the overall series. So if you've done some spec fiction, if you've done a couple of works and uh, fan fiction is something that you enjoy doing, use it in your portfolio because it will, it, it is a proof that you can work in that, uh, that field and in that format. Uh, you're probably gonna start as a script assistant or a script coordinator um, before getting into the writer's room, but having that portfolio is even gonna get you that assistant position. Um, nothing compares to being in the room. Like your presence, like showing up for yourself and for the production, or, or for whatever event you have, and nothing can, can replace that. So it's really obvious when people are phoning it in and nobody wants to be on set with someone for 16 hours a day who's not pulling their weight. Um, like Fever, it's a small industry. Anything you do is gonna get around. So don't be mean, don't be a jerk. Be nice, be somebody that what people wanna hang out with because I'm not going to lie, here in North America, film, it's usually a minimum 12 hour day. The longest day I ever worked was 26 hours. And people laugh at me and call me weak because they've done 36 hours straight. Um, the industry is changing and as the next generation, you have the power to make things better. When I started, um, there was, interns didn't get paid. There was a big kerfuffle about interns getting not getting paid. Now interns get paid. Um, things are changing slowly. When I first started, people were still flagging around their uh, their books and their union rule guides that said sexual harassment happens. Deal with it. That does not actually. It's, that was back in the seventies. They haven't looked at the new contract yet. So if somebody's coming in like waving a, a union rule in your face, make sure it's the most recent one because some people like to hold on to their, their past regulations that aren't enforceable and pretend like they can. Um, I'm getting a little off topic, but uh, let me just check my notes. <laughs> non-union unfortunately a lot of you are going to start with non-union productions and they are the wild west of film and not just because they often do westerns but uh, there is no guidelines because of lobbyists and because the film industry is different than regular regular employment and labor standards and labor rules do not apply to film sets 
which is why the union is required. Like, if you're in the union, you have a backing, but you have no regulations, you have no laws protecting you in the non-union world, which is why it was extremely important to know your limits, to know your boundaries, and know what's right for you, and not be willing to accept dangerous situations. Um, never let anybody convince you not to fill in a in workplace injury report if you have it, even if it's just a paper cut. Fill in that report because if it gets an infection or if there's a bacteria or something, I've been talked out of uh, filling in a report on one of my first movies that I worked on. I might have to go into surgery for uh, my foot because it healed wrong and now I have uh, muscle damage and degenerative issues. That was 15 years ago. And at the time, I didn't think it was anything. Now I'm suffering the consequences. So let me be a cautionary tale. You personally, your body, you are irreplaceable. Nobody else is like you. Please protect yourself. No movie, no job, no TV show, no cool effect, no awesome shot is worth your mind, your body, or your life. Um, death in the film industry is a huge issue. I actually just posted a blog um, Monday about burnout in the film industry. The average age of death in the Canadian film industry is 55. And that, de depending on what department you work in, it can be in the 40s. Transport departments, they're the ones who are often doing 36 hour shifts without a break. They're the ones driving you around when they are not getting proper rest. They, uh, they're in their 40s for hair, makeup, wardrobe, often have to be at set, like this clock starts at call time. So if it calls at 10, 10 to 10, that is, but pre-calls, your grips, your electrics, your camera partners are there two hours before. Hair, makeup, wardrobe could be there for six hours before. And the clock doesn't start until college, like for the day to start. They're getting paid, but the timer on when the day is gonna be over hasn't started. So, and a lot of people are not, you don't uh, trade off halfway through the day, especially if you're a lead, you are there from start to finish. And then the next day, I had one show where I got home and I had two hours before I had to leave to get back to set. I have, as a script supervisor, I usually have an hour to two hours of paperwork when I get home. My job is not done when set is done. So I have to go collect all the information, make it make sense to the editors and all the end of day reports to make sure that yes, we did shoot everything we said we were gonna shoot, or no, we didn't, we need to come back and do this. Um, it is not sustainable. I have, in the, my last year before I moved off of set to work uh, in the office in animation, I went off the road twice driving home from work. I had asked for accommodation, either put me up in a hotel or drive me. They said, no, you're fine, and I went off the road. And I had to show up at work the next day and do my job because as a script supervisor, I'm a department of one. I don't even get an assistant. Like, if I was running three sets and one shoot, we were in a studio and they wouldn't give me a, an assistant to run even one of the other two sets. So I have three sets, three monitors, three directors, and I'm collecting all of the information for all of them. I should have walked, but I was in my mind that I have to do this. I have to stick it out because it's going to be bad for my reputation. Protecting yourself is never wrong. Standing up for yourself is never wrong. And if this is something that I could have been told when I was here in grade 12, I would have done a lot better. But I had a drama teacher that when I told her I was going into film laughed in my face. So you are already doing way better than most people in my class because you actually have a teacher who knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Just have to throw that in there. Um, so many different departments on set. I've worked with directors that they've never done anything but write and direct. And they show up and they have these, they have a hundred thousand dollar budget and they have these grand plans. They want to do all of these things. It's like you realize that's a hundred thousand dollars just for that one shot. It's not possible. Or they're asking people to do like things that are unsafe or just physically impossible because they don't know what's possible, what can be done. So if you are interested in, even if you want to be a director, take a PA job, take a, a sound assistant job, take a camera assistant job, take a grip job, an electric job. Um, learn what people are doing because people who are respected and feel appreciated are gonna work so much harder for you. 
directors who just like, I have no respect for you because you're just a worker and I'm the director, aren't gonna get the quality of work from their crew that directors who shake their crew's hand and say thank you at the end of the day. Like, it is night and day. Like, it all comes back to don't be an asshole. You don't have to, like, you don't have to be there. People don't have to hire you. People don't have to bring you back. So it's hard enough. In, uh, the industry is hard enough. Don't make it harder on yourself or others. Like, be good to each other. Um, anybody know the difference between a grip and, ele and an electric on set? So they often get grip and electric department often is grouped together, but the grips are the ones who build all the infrastructure. They put the shades in front of the lights. They put up the stands. The electrics are the ones handing the lights and doing anything with electricity. They have very distinct jobs, but very rarely do they like, will a, a grip touch the power source, and very uh, rarely will one of the electrics dealing with the lights be the one up in front holding the, the shade and like putting the go-go's up. Um, grips can build anything. I like to say that film set is the best place for a zombie apocalypse because you have every skill set. You've got the organizers, you've got food, you've got the people who can build, you've got the people who can clothe you. Um, you've got a couple of people who are a little bit extra, so if the animals are coming and you need to leave them behind. <laughs> um, it, it really becomes a community and like you can be with those people for nine months. And you might not see your family for nine months. So if things start to feel like these people are your family, they are not your family, they are co-workers, and uh, please don't mix those relationships. Um, dating on set is always a touchy thing because you never know if you break up, date someone and on a show and you're on there for nine months and you break up and you still have to work with them. <laughs> There's been some drama there. So being able to deal with uh, personalities and leave the baggage at the door. It's a, a big thing in theater, but even in film, leave the baggage at the door. And if you can't, then like step back. Because I was having, when I stepped back, I was having panic attacks every day. Because I got diagnosed with uh, PTSD uh, from working on set. And I couldn't show up on set without having a panic attack. So I had to step back. Then um, animation. We have so many animation studios in it's getting bigger, um, so production coordinating. There's other film-related jobs that aren't in the industry. There is the government administrative jobs, who's putting out the permits. There's behind the scenes, there's social media. There is media and content in every single industry, uh, in science, in, um, in education, in business. This, arts is intersectional, and it goes back to like study something worth writing about because if you have experience with science or engineering, then an engineering company that needs a media uh, person or, um, or a writer for, for content, you've already got the skills and the back knowledge. So if you have, find ways to merge your interests. Um, find ways to diversify your income. So if you're writing on one thing and you have, take, I used to transcribe, now AI transcribe. So that used to be my like really great, oh, I'm in between set, I can just sit at home and type. Nope, can't do that anymore. Reality TV was really big because they had three hour interviews for every like one second clip of audio that they would put on. So they would, before Adobe had the automatic transcribing, it would literally just be there three hours sitting and trying to just transcribe some drunk person out, uh, from uh, Come Dine With Me Canada or, master, or someone on MasterChef at the end of the day being like, oh, this is what I did and describing all of the things. Um, but that doesn't exist anymore. So can you use AI tools? Uh, quick comment on AI. AI is a tool. It is not a substitute for creativity. I honestly, I believe that it is the future. There are things that it is inevitable, the cat's out of the bag. There's no sense in vilifying it. There's, we need to find a way to work within it. Um, I personally, I hate first drafts, a blank page, hate it but write, a couple, write the outline and throw it in an AI, there's a first draft. It's like the Reddit, uh, the, the Reddit ideology. If something's wrong, you have to fix it. Like you, you wanna answer on Reddit, you don't ask the question, you make a wrong statement and then everybody's gonna correct you. So that trick yourself, I like to trick myself. It's like, okay, here's a first draft, well that's wrong, well now I need to fix it. Um, but there's nothing more terrifying to me than a blank page. So find, use the tools that you have 
don't be afraid of them. Find different ways of making things come, whether you have a blog and you get ad money from like people clicking, and you have a YouTube channel and you are able to monetize. Um, yeah, you, there, how many people have like, made it on YouTube? Better can you start it as YouTube shorts, like just monologues. Uh, Carmilla was, was got a uh, feature film after the three seasons of the web series. Um, blogs, talks, everything is content. Everything is content. Everything we do behind the scenes. Anyway, people want to laugh. People want to be entertained. People have a lot more people are getting diagnosed with ADHD. I got diagnosed at 36, which is also one of the reasons of uh, PTSD of like coping wrong and dealing with being this wrong, but understanding that that it was an issue has helped a lot. Being able to apply the appropriate um, coping mechanisms helps. I also got to work on an animation for Headspace called The Magical Adventures of Unicorn Island, which is all about mindfulness, but like aimed towards like 10 year olds. I think adults should watch it. Um, but it's from Lily Singh, who also started on YouTube doing Video, live videos every week. Now she's doing tours across um, across the world. Came this her Unicorn Island is her happy place that she mentioned in one of her videos. And Headspace, the the app about meditation, jumped on that idea and partnered with her to make a ten episode series about meditation and your finding your happy place. So being out there. Like, there's not, like, again, there's nothing uh, substitutes for showing up and being there. Um, I have another topic, and then, of course, my brain just flittered. Uh, show your work. You always, like, you are your brand. You are your portfolio. Right now, like, more than your resume is your online presence. And this has been increasing. I've seen actors. Uh, I've been on set where they're just deciding which actor do we ha uh, do we hire? The one that's good or the one that has uh, two million followers? The one that has two million followers. And unfortunately, that's because they want to jump on that that uh, network that she has. So if you have anything, if you have a following, put it forward. Put your work up. If you have a portfolio, writing portfolio. Start getting it up there because you can always update it, even if it's not your best work now, or your, in a year, maybe what you put up now might not be your best work, but you could always replace it. Keep that up there. If you have a LinkedIn, um, everybody connecting through LinkedIn and Facebook has actually been really uh, useful. There's film groups, there's connections, there's communities, there's support groups, um, job sharing. We're like, hey, I got an offer for a contract, but I can't do it. Is anybody available? Uh, Definitely engage your community. Uh, anything online, be careful. Like again, the internet is forever. So, um, be like again, don't be mean, don't be rude, don't be controversial for no reason. Like have a, a purpose, but uh, leverage. Like don't wait until you're like graduating university to start building that portfolio and get yourself out there because you get. Just like any job, it's not what you know, it's who you know. If you've gotten an interview, they've already decided you can do the job, but they want to see who you are and if they can stand working with you. Like, I've been in five person uh, interviews where I'm across a panel for five people and they're all asking me personality questions because they all want to know if they can hang out with me for 18 hours a day for uh, five days a week for six months. Personality matters. Um, okay, what else do I have to say? Show your work. Art is a business. You are a business. You are a brand. So think about what do you stand for? What, what do you support? And engage in that. Volunteer always, like volunteer work always looks good. How can you support community? How can you support yourself? Um, but never forget that this is a business. You have to do your taxes. You have to keep track of all of your, your expenses. Um, if you invest in equipment, you need to like, keep track of that and all your maintenance. But don't think of your, like a lot of people are like, oh, you're an artist, you do this because you love it. It's like, no, you do this because it's a business. 
And without that business, nobody's gonna have their Brooklyn Nine Nine or reality TV or uh, Shameless or any of those other shows. Like anybody who says like, no, arts is, it has no value, or challenge them to, in, to engage in no music, no podcast, no television, no, no news, no internet for, for 30 days and see how long it, it takes them to say that no, arts is important and that entertainment is valuable. Like, just because they think they can do it, doesn't mean they can. I love challenging people, like, I could do that. Like, oh, sure, here, try it. You know? <laughs> um, back to art is intersectional. There's always crosses and everything. Uh, you are students of life now. Like, your experiences are gonna fuel everything you do. So live, experience, um, obviously try and make smart financial choices, but take your opportunities and you never know where you're gonna, you're gonna end up because there's been some weird things. Uh, one thing I did mention, uh, the prop story, um, this comes on set, like stay in your lane. Is, uh, unless it's non-union, a lot of people step up and like help out, but in union sets, like when it comes down to departments, if you're not supposed to be touching and you're not supposed to be interacting with it, don't interact with it. Um, always report injuries. What else? Animation is animation is interesting. Even working in the office, you get the opportunity sometimes to do scratch audio. So you're in pre-production, and the animators need to know how the act, like what the lines are going to be, so they can kind of show make the characters emote. But the actors haven't reported the line yet. They'll recruit the the crew. Um, to just do some scratch audio. So if you're practicing voiceover, or if you're into voice acting at all, then it's a great place to actually, like you're in the, in the industry, like you're right there. And it's very unlikely that you would get actually cast for that role, but then you have the practice and you're, you're more, yeah. Again, being seen, being, people knowing you, there's no place for that. I don't know how long I've been talking about. Oh, oh about, about being black. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I think that's actually, let me just quickly. <laughs> Multiple re revenue streams, yeah. You're gonna see a lot of people like, where can they get? And I'm like, I, and, but they're teaching and like they're getting all their money from teaching, not actually doing the things. So always trust but verify. I hate to quote Reagan, but uh, it is kind of a good quote, but like, honestly, like, yeah, make sure and, and once you verify that it's not good, don't stick around for hope. Don't, yeah, don't get scammed for apartments either because, damn, I'm looking at her apartment right now and 90% of the ads are scams. That's just other life advice. <laughs> um, all right, let's, I guess, questions, answers? So is there something that, like, you have, like, an idea for, and then when it, you actually go to film it or something, it turns out to be the opposite, and, like, you want to, like, Like, so you get to the shot and you set it all up. You say something's not working, let's, let's, uh, let's discuss. Um, I've definitely been on shoots, or even like some of my own uh, indie shoots where you get there and it's like, this is a script and this is what's happening. Well, can you work with what's happening right now? Or like, is this really, it's not fitting. And most people, they want it to be good. They want to succeed. They want to see the project like they, everybody wants the project to be something that they can brag about. So if, as long as you're respectful and polite, um, well, as polite as you can be, like something's not working, let's make it better. Um, most people are amenable to that unless they have an ego. Um, so it's a lot of politics and sometimes there's nothing you can do to make it, to save it. And if it's above your head and somebody else is making the decision, Hands off, the decision is made. Uh, do you have a favorite project that you've worked on? Carmilla, um, because the entire crew, like, it was so hilarious to work on. We did 136 pages in four days. Um, we did 36 like 10 minute episodes in four days. And it was all like webcam style, so like from the webcam, so everything was in this one. It was all blocking, so it was a real, 
fever. Um, it was a real mix of fever staging and film. Uh, and just the, the public reception, the, the vibe on set and the content, it was just like, this is, it's just fun and I don't know, to this day, it just still makes me happy to think about it. Okay. Um, so is, how do you find different jobs or like different uh, like film like gigs? Like is there websites? Or yep. And actually, I've started a spreadsheet that I've shared uh, with Heather that uh, she's going to share with you. There's Media Job Search Canada. Mandy.com used to be a free one. Now it's paid. It's not quite as good. Price, my first job I ever got was Craigslist. I applied for a PA job on uh, a reality show that was doing a feature on Busker Fest in Toronto. So I put in a resume. Five minutes later, I got a call, and I was on set the next day. And, um, so Craigslist, there's media job search. Uh, if you're interested in camera department, there's the camera union, which has a trainee program, which uh, circulates you around. It's one of the easiest ways to get on set. Um, Facebook groups like Searching for Crew, uh, Student Films, CFC in Toronto, which is a Canadian film center. They often have volunteer positions because everybody's a student. Um, when it comes to volunteer work, I, I'm conflicted because at one point, like, yes, you need to do volunteer work to get the experience. Um, I've worked on projects that have requested volunteers that should have been paying people. So again, use your judgment. How much value does being on set for no money provide you? Are they providing you food? I've been on sets where like, oh no, don't worry, we'll, like, we'll feed you and you'll, you'll get credit and everything. I show up and there's literally a banana and one bottle of water on the craft table and it's like, um, how is this going to feed 50 of us? So use your judgment. Um, yeah, so Mandy.com, Media Job Search Canada. I found a lot on Facebook, to be honest. And then part of it is just leveraging your community and uh, the hidden job market, as they like to call it, in uh, career circles and employment counseling. But uh, there's so much out there. It's just what can you do, what's viable. Um, I once. Did a, uh, worked on a feature film and it was a really, I was really hard up. I had like the movie I was supposed to do fell through a week before we were supposed to go to camera and I turned down two other projects to work on the one that I already said. So I ended up working on a different project for $50 a day. Um, there are some people that that is all they have and they're trying to make the passion project, but like at least that one $50 a day, they were feeding us well and they were transporting us places. But, uh, um, always judge the value of like what am i getting out of this versus what is this costing me hopefully that answers but yeah i've got a spreadsheet some of it's articles some of it's referral links some of it's uh, job search sites i'll be posting about our google costume so you guys can access it and i'm going to keep updating it because oh fantastic thank you yeah i got more stuff i realized maybe i forgot this one are there any other questions 